So after years of rumors and speculation, Nintendo and Illumination released the first Super Mario Brothers trailer. It is here. It is packed with fantastic moments and a few Easter eggs for Super Mario fans to appreciate. As we all know, the title character is voiced by Chris Pratt. However, voice actress Tara Strong has criticized the new Mario movie for not offering the title role to Mario's in-game voice actor, Charles Marinette. Martinette. Martinette, sorry. Martinet. That guy. <laughs> In a tweet, Strong, whose own prolific career includes voice performances as Harley Quinn, Batgirl, and the Fairly Odd Parents, Timmy Turner, posted a photograph of herself next to Martinet with the text, It Should Be Charles. Voice actors... I'm going to put my heart and soul in this for at least 20 years, help sell billions in merch, make the studio millions of dollars, and make generations around the world happy. Hollywood, we do not care. I'm with Tara Strong on this one. No disrespect at all to Chris Pratt. He's a dope actor. He's been in a, a couple of dope franchises. And this may be another one. But for to, but for the role to not even be offered to the OG who has voiced the game for 20 years, that's crazy to me. That just doesn't, that, 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 that math is not math. I don't get it. So, yeah, I'm with Tara Strong on this one. I don't know about y'all, but, yeah, this ain't right. That's just how I feel. Let me know how y'all feel, too. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek? D-Y-S-G, keep it real, that's key. We the best OGs, dope topics come see. D-Y-S-G, keep it real, that's key. We the best OGs, dope topics come see. I got a question, do you speak geek? Yeah. New episodes on the podcast dropping each uh-huh. week. Get hip to the game, I'm giving y'all a sneak yeah. peek. Flavor for your ears, bars flowing on unique beats. Yeah. Blurs and nerds, freaks and geeks. The source wall wins, they dropping comics. You should cop, I think you don't up cheap. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep on Donna and Nicks. They preaching the gospel, real ish, ill like mono, they sick. Right. Thumb life if you're into games with combos and kicks. This podcast is a gift, it's as real as it gets. Yeah. Blurs taking over, with clever marketing, we gain exposure. Feeding the community magic, your boy's a nerd promoter. The dialogue is Jimmy Crack. Corn, we aiming for gold. The truth was told. I can't speak for other platforms. Uh-huh. Sharp as cats out like knives, claws, and tack thorns. Yeah. We blacking out, going crazy like a black storm. Wow. DYSG, don't forget to follow back. Hosting on the airwaves, always keeping it a stack. Flowers to my haters, psych. I ain't giving y'all jack. Number one on the charts, give your boy a gold plaque. y'all this your boy nicks back again for another episode of do you speak geek this is episode 133 and i am with y'all how y'all doing out there i hope y'all are having a good day i hope you're having a good week but um yo shout to my followers shout to the fans yo shout to my family my friends my loved ones all of y'all who helped make dysg possible thank you all for for rocking with me and rolling with me and just being here, so I appreciate all of y'all so much. But if you are new here, welcome to Do You Speak Geek. This is the podcast where we bring you all the latest and grace as far as news and reviews inside of the geek realm. Shout out to Spreaker, that's the home team. But uh, if wherever you get your podcasts, look for Do You Speak Geek and please hit that subscribe. Do You Speak Geek.com, the central hub for everything DYSG, the blog, the merch, the everything. So please, do you speak geek.com? Visit that site, say it as a favorite, and also follow us on social media Facebook at DYSGFB, Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets, Twitch at DYSG underscore games, 
Instagram, TikTok, Quirk Chat, at Do You Speak Geek. The YouTube channel, the only place where you can find the Donna and Daddy show. Please be sure to like, subscribe, Hulk smash that bell for all notifications, and leave comments. We want to know what you guys think. New content coming soon. Like I said, y'all just be patient with me. It is coming. I promise this. I, I'm going to try to make this the last week I say that. <laughs> but I'm going to definitely give y'all some new content soon. So please stay close for that. Also, for those of you who are following on Instagram, the DYSG award categories have been announced. Please be sure to go to those posts and post your nominations. We can only make this dope with your nominations. So please Go nominate who you think is the best cosplayer. What was comic book of the year? Who is the best wrestler of the year? Who has the best fashion brand of the year? Please go make those nominations heard so I know who I need to be rewarding this year. All right? So I'm leaving it in y'all hands. If somebody don't win, it's y'all fault. All right? (laughs) And if the wrong person win, it's y'all fault. Just saying. (laughs) All right, y'all, let's go ahead and do what we do about this time, y'all. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. Are you ready? All right, we got reviews coming at you at Rapid Fire. Werewolf by Night, a mesmerizing homage to classic Universal monster movies with a fresh Marvel twist. Y'all, this was dope. Man-Thing was brilliantly, brilliantly done. Elsa Bloodstone, this was dope. Check this out, y'all. Batman and Superman Battle for the Super Sons that this debuted at NYCC. It may be limited by its brief runtime and predictable plot, but it succeeds where it matters most by capturing the delightful dynamic between Superboy and Robin. So please check that out when it comes out. The Midnight Club Season 1. The care Mike Flanagan shows to the dead and dying is ever present through the Midnight Club. Unfortunately, a strong story to match the great performances are not. This one's okay. My Hero Academia Season 6 premiere kicks off with a somber table settler but prepares us for an all-out war here we go again y'all let's get it overwatch 2 it switched to the 5v5 format breathes new life into what was once the sharpest shooter around it just hasn't quite recaptured all that glory yet so it will stay close hellraiser it's uh it's reinvigorated reboot that gets the blood pumping. It's starring Jamie Clayton's worthy pinhead performance and it sets a fresh tone with immersive reverence paid to Clive Barker's work, so they definitely did my man justice. Check this one out. It is dope. Mortal Kombat Legends Snowblind. Despite its welcome focus on Kenshi's plot as a warrior, the movie is a overly familiar and muddled mixed bag, so yeah, check it out if you want to. Or don't. <laughs> Amsterdam. David O. Russell returns with Amsterdam, which wastes an incredibly ensemble on a story that's overpacked and self-important. Y'all can really skip this one, to be honest with you. And finally, Eat the Rich, the GameStop saga, is a breezy, easily digested summary of recent events that make a fairly complicated topic something the wider audience can get its arms around. So basically, if you didn't understand the whole GameStop stock thing, This documentary is for you. Check that out. Let's go ahead and hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the Source Wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. (laughs) There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pull list this week, we have Batman vs. Robin number two. In the wake of Damian Wayne's devastating attack on the Batcave, Bruce and Alfred are on the run and running out of time. Magic users across the planet are experiencing dangerous and deadly power flares, and Batman must solve this mystery before his friends and allies are turned to ash. To crack this case, the Dark Knight is going to need the help of one of the greatest masters of the magic arts on the planet, Zatanna. What awaits our ragtag group of heroes in the House of Secrets? 
Can Damien break free of Neza's possession and spell before his murder, his, before he murders his own father? All of this and more in the explosive second chapter of Batman vs. Robin. Damien's a real douchebag in this one. I hope he gets his, I hope, I hope Bruce spanks him. Like, at all done, I hope he just spanks him. Yes. Yes, I do. Anyway. <laughs> Star Wars Visions number one. From the creative minds behind the Star Wars Visions episode, The Duel, comes an all new story. Takashi Ozakai is continuing his storytelling from the acclaimed Star Wars Visions episode, The Duel, featuring the Ronin. The mythology of Star Wars infused with elements of Fuel Japan makes this issue a must read for Star Wars and manga fans alike. This is a one shot I will definitely pick in my hands, get my hands on for sure. Namor, the Submariner number one. A century into the future, not much land remains on Earth. A combination of worsening climate and a devastating war with the Kree has left the surface of the planet mostly inhospitable with an ever-dwindling population of air breathers and profound lack of superheroes to protect them. Enter Namor, who these many years is on who these many years on is no longer king of Atlantis, but the ruler of the entire world. Imperious Rex, man. Good God. (laughs) This guy here. But we knew that was coming. You know, they wasn't good. We knew the name was going to get his own book eventually with the whole Wakanda for everything coming. Speaking of Wakanda, number one, the Black Panther is no longer welcome in Wakanda. What? Get out of here. Who is this proud nation without its king? This exciting new miniseries that answers each question spotlights a different fan favorite Wakandan character. First up, Shuri proves that being without the Black Panther doesn't mean Wakanda is without heroes to protect it, and that there is a reason she too once wielded the power. Plus, part one of the history of the Black Panther backup story, providing the first time any the first time anywhere a definitive overview of every Wakandan who has ever held the mantle of the Black Panther. This one should be dope. A nice little history lesson for y'all out there. And finally, we have Hitomi number one. In feudal era Japan, a drifter with no prospects begins training in secret under Yasuke, a once famous displaced, disgraced warrior as she struggles to find her place in a society entrenched in discrimination and violence. Combining the historical sweep and elegance of Kurosawa with the visceral action of Tarantino, this saga follows the trials and tribulations of a young female warrior who travels the countryside, unyielding as she works to gain the rank of samurai, a title no man, monster, or myth can give to her, but one that she will have to take for herself. This one's going to be fire. I can't wait for this one. So please pick this one up and the rest of these that I mentioned this week at your local comic book store. Now in source wall news, New York Comic Con, y'all, they dropped some bombs on us. Let's get to it. Announced at NYCC, Bloodline, daughter of Blade from writer Danny Lore and artist Karen S. Darbo, follows Brielle Brooks, daughter of Eric Brooks, a.k.a. Blade. Marvel Comics introduced Bill uh, Brielle Brooks into the Marvel Universe earlier this year in the pages of Free Comic Book Day, Avengers X-Men. Now it's time for Brielle to discover her parentage and enter an entirely new world on the darker side of the Marvel Universe. I'm definitely picking that up. (laughs) Please believe it. The Power Cosmic will return to the Marvel Universe soon. Taking on from New York Comic Con this weekend, Marvel officially unveiled Silver Surfer Ghost Light, the latest tale to feature the fan favorite cosmic stalwart. Hitting shelves in February, Ghost Light is a five issue miniseries that is set to bring another major cosmic player into the mix. Tony Brooks and her family have moved into the quiet town of Sweetwater, but nothing is quite as it seems with their new home. The House of Ideas said in the announcement, what mystery did Tony and her family unravel that would call upon the Sentinel of the Spaceway, the Silver Surfer? And just who or what is Ghost Light? All right, now we got humans in the mix with the uh, Silver Surfer. Should be good. We'll see what happens. Marvel will introduce a new X Men team this February under the guidance of Lucas Bishop, Captain Commander of Krakoa. 
The new series Bishop War College puts bishops from and puts bishop front and center with TV writer Jay Hoffman, who has written for Marvel shows like Cloak and Dagger and Jessica Jones, and artist Sean Damian Hill at the helm. The series sees Bishop assembling a new team of X-Men and includes young mutants Armor and Surge who were both among the losers of the second annual X-Men fan vote. They are also some newcomers to the franchise and characters relatively underdeveloped until now. For those of you who have not seen this cover, it looks like an all-black version of X-Men, which honestly, I'm okay with that, but... You know, I'm not I'm not that black person to say like, yeah, I want everything black. You know, I'm I'm not that black person. So if it happens, cool. But if it doesn't, I'm 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 fine with it too. You know, I, I don't need not everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's just me. That's how I feel. Say what you want about me, but that's just how I feel about it. But will I be reading it? Absolutely. Marvel announced several new series featuring X Men characters, including Wolverine's clone X23. The new series X23 Deadly Regenesis is a five issue limited series. Written by Erica Schultz with art by Edgar Salazar, and that's going to be dropping on March 2023. Marvel revealed no further details about the title. Additionally announced, focusing on X-Men characters including Rogue and Gambit, a limited series written by Stephanie Phillips with art by Carlos Gomez. The first issue goes on sale March 2023. A previous Rogue and Gambit miniseries written by Kelly Thompson preceded the fan favorite couple's wedding surprise in X-Men Gold in 2018. That wedding led to Mr. and Mrs. X, also done by Thompson, following them on their honeymoon and future adventures. With Gambit recent with Gambit's recent death, there are questions lingering around this title. Finally, Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain, is written by Tini Howard, with pencils by Vasco Jovier, and covers by Eric Duorso. Launching in February 2023, the story sees Howard continuing Betsy Braddock's adventure as Captain Britain. As the events of Knights of X. So these all should be pretty good. I'm particularly interested about that X-23 book. That one should be all right. 2023 also marks the 85th anniversary of Superman's debut. And DC is celebrating that milestone with a very major revamp of the Superman comic book line. That includes the launch of a new monthly Superman series from Dark Crisis and Infinite Earth writer Joshua Williamson and Far Sector artist Jamal Campbell in February. As revealed during DC's Superman panel at NYCC, the new status quo builds on recent storylines like Dark Crisis and Kal-El Returns. Kal-El has returned to Earth from his long ordeal on War World and is ready to reconnect with his family and resume his old life as Superman. But just as Lex Luthor is in prison, that doesn't mean it won't be new enemies and new challenges for both Superman to confront. Kal-El will be the main character of Williamson and Campbell's Superman series as well as Action Comics. The latter series will retain its classic numbering but switch to a new, larger format beginning with January's Action Comics 1051. Current writer Philip Kennedy Johnson will continue to write the lead story. Dan Jurgens and Lee Weeks, who introduced Lois and Clark's and son John in 2015 Convergence, will reunite for a backup story called Lois and Clark 2 Doom Rising. That story will take place when John was still a child and his parents were living anonymously on their farm prior to the event of 2017's Superman Reborn. Finally, writer Leah Williams and artist Marguerite Savage will reintroduce Power Girl to the DCU in a three-part backup story that will spin out of the Lazarus Planet crossover. Fortunately, just because Kal-El is back does not mean John won't have a book of his own anymore. Superman, son of Kal-El writer Tom Taylor and artist Clayton Henry are continuing their story in a, lo- in a new limited series called Adventures of Superman, the book will pit John against his kidnapper, Ultraman, and also see the return of Earth 2 Superman, Val Zod. Yeah, buddy, Val Zod's back in the building. Let's get it. Let's get it. Speaking of Lazarus Planet, that was also announced during the Exploring the DC Multiverse panel. With massive volcanic eruption, the Lazarus volcano blanketing the Earth's atmosphere in the same dangerous chemicals that have kept Ra's al Ghul alive all these centuries. A number of DC heroes will be exposed to this airborne Lazarus, resulting in them gaining new or enhanced powers. The tagline for the crossover is Heroes Transformed, Secret Revealed, 
powers unleashed. For example, Batman will bond with the Helmet of Fate and become the new Dr. Fate. Oh my god, that's OP as hell. That is so OP. Just because... <laughs> that's... Ah, God. Okay, so because it's all we know, Batman is powerful enough, John Kent will go through his own version of his father's infamous electric blue Superman phase. And Martian Manhunter will be mentally bonded to a nest of doomsdays, transforming him into a rampaging beast. Oh my god. Not John Jones. Jesus. Marvel's Joe Quesada, Quesada sorry, recently ended his long tenure at the company after serving first as editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics and then as executive vice president and creative director for Marvel Entertainment. So where does the Marvel icon go from there? Why, to DC Comics, of course. DC made a surprise announcement during Jim Lee and Friends panel at NYCC. Casada will be getting back to his roots as an artist and designing a number of new covers for various DC titles in 2023. The first of these will be appearing of a cover of a variant Batman 131, followed by another variant of Batman 132 in February. All right, so Joe Cassade is back in the building at DC. All right, now, that's all your source wall news, people. I hope you guys will uh, keep up with that, and these comments are coming out. They're going to be amazing. I'm waiting for that Superman lineup. It should be pretty phenomenal. Can't wait to get into it. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, people, let's hop into this. Todd McFarlane. Spawn movie details. Let's get it. So we gain a few new writers for this project with some major comic book movie pedigree. McFarlane revealed that Scott Silver, who wrote for Joker, and Malcolm Spellman, who wrote for The Falcon and Winter Soldier and Captain America New World Order, and Matthew Nixon, Yesterday Was Everything, have signed on to pen a new screenplay for the long-awaited reboot. Come on, y'all. That's, that's those some heavy hitters right there. The news comes with a little more than after a year of Broken City's Brian Tucker came on board, which has been in the works since 2009. Silver and Spellman are pinning a new script rather than rewriting Tucker's draft. McFarlane himself is still attached to the direct, to direct as well as produce the film alongside Blumhouse Productions' Jason Bloom. And in case anyone was speculating, yes, Jamie Foxx is still on board to be a title character playing my man Al Simmons aka Spawn Titans Season 4 has been announced so Titans Season 4 will have a two episode premiere on November 3rd and new episodes will be released weekly until December 1st there will then be a mid season break and six new episodes will conclude the season later in 2023 the new teaser doesn't give us much, but it does feature the previous mentioned bloody ritual and chant that uses the words Azerath Ventrion Zinthos. These words have been used by Raven in the past to summon her dark powers and abilities, and Azerath itself is a parallel word and her is a parallel world and her birthplace. It's Titans. I'm in. I mean, what what does y'all think? <laughs> y'all know I'm a DC guy. It's Titans. I'm in. Speaking of more DC, Doom Patrol Season 4, baby. Let's get it. The first part of Season 4 of Doom Patrol will return to HBO Max on Thursday, December 8th, and a new trailer features a surprisingly deadly and musical bunch of creatures. December 8th, we'll see the first two episodes of Doom Patrol premiere on HBO Max, and a new episode will be released each week until January 5th. There will be a mid-season break, and six more episodes will arrive later in 2023. Let's go, DC. I love how y'all staggering them like that. Doom Patrol, Titans, I like that. Y'all doing y'all thing over there. All right, we have a first look at HBO Max's Velma. Um, it's teaming up with Minnie Kaling in a mature origin story for Velma and Scooby Gang. And we got our first look at the series at New York Comic Con. In a panel, HBO shared a sneak peek of the first episode which establishes Velma as an origin story rather than just a uh, team up with the gang to solve mysteries. The preview was full of grisly murder, 
profanity and some some booty oh my hey yo okay then well hbo max hasn't shared the preview online ign was in attendance and got a glimpse of the first episode which begins a more voiceover velma kent dinkley played by mindy kaling telling the audience about the bone chilling events that led to the greatest mystery solving team up ever i'm with it man let's go velma also has a little bit of a queerness to her too she's gay in this one i'm with it man let's see what's going on i like and his butts okay so i'm definitely in <laughs> okay y'all uh let's speak technical for a moment technically speaking your technological advancements 1.21 gigawatts have you tried turning it off and on again all right people technically speaking google has officially announced the pixel 7 and 7 pro like last year's Google Pixel 6 family, the Pixel 7 lineup includes an in-house processor called the Google Tensor G2 and the Titan M2 chip. The latter aims to protect your personal data, according to Google. Google promises that the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro will include five years of security updates, the same as the, the Pixel 6 family. Google also confirmed that the Pixel 7 lineup will include a built-in virtual private network at no additional cost. What's interesting about the free charge VPN that Google released its own VPN back in 2020, usually costing about 10 bucks a month and includes other perks such as two terabits of cloud storage. The tech giant notes that <coughs> the tech giant notes that the, notes that the Pixel 7 features up to 72 hours of battery when extremely bat when extreme battery saver mode is enabled. It includes a better camera, promises to better nighttime selfies, and capture skin tones more accurately. The Pixel 7 lineup also includes a clear calling feature which uses machine learning to reduce background noises and allow you to hear your calls more clearly. Alongside the fingerprint reader underneath the system display, the Pixel 7 selfie cameras feature a face recognition system and there is face unlock now. The Pixel 7 will retail at $599, while the Pixel Pro will cost $899. <sighs> I miss having a droid. I'm not even going to lie. I miss having a droid. Don't get me wrong. iPhone is cool. I have it because I'm a content creator now, but I really miss having a droid. I really do. Maybe I'll go back to Pixel. Maybe I'll go back with Pixel. Who knows? This sounds like a pretty dope phone, and it's not as expensive as iPhone either, so that's that. Plus, I get a free VPN. What? Come on now. That's that, 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 that's that's groundbreaking right there. I like that. All right, y'all. That has been the pod. I'm going to do my thing and go ahead and get out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to listen to this podcast. Subscribe to this podcast. Let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. Check out the YouTube channel. Like, and subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek? <laughs>